everyone, this is Ruby. Welcome. Today we're going to go over statistical notation for chapter number one. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the letter X. The letter X is very important because what, I, what it identifies is a particular variable. For example, if we were to ask the students in class, how many pets do you have? X would tell us the number of pets that they have in terms of their response. There could be different kinds of pets. There could be cats, there could be dogs, there could be parrots, there could be snakes, as you can see in the photo. But what we're interested in is not in the different types of pets they have, but how many total do they have? So we see that Kevin has four pets. We see that Yvette has three pets. We see that Jorge has zero pets. And we see that Amy has two pets. All right, so then what happens is for our X values, we have four. We have, uh, that signifies the four uh, pets that Kevin has. We have three, that signifies the three pets that Yvette has. We have zero, that uh, signifies that uh, Jorge has no pets. And we have the two, that signifies that Amy has two pets. All right, so what we've covered here is that our notation for a variable is going to be X. And under X will be numeric values that will represent how much of that particular variable that each individual participant has. All right, so we're gonna go on next to order of operations. The order of operations, in order for you to be able to solve any kind of equation, and this equation is gonna contain the value of x because we're going to wanna know something about our variable, that you have to follow the order of operations, which you probably learned before if you went to school in the States uh, with the acronym of Please Excuse My Dear Aunt Sally. And in statistics, we use the same idea, but we add one more step, which is summation. So what you have here is what you have had in the past, which is number one, that all, that all of our um, mathematical calculations are going to be started with parentheses. So everything starts with the parentheses. Then the second thing that's done are exponents. So exponents would be the second thing. Then we would have multiplication and division. And then finally, we'd have summation, and we'd have summation with sigma. And what sigma is telling you is uh, essentially just like you had other kinds of orders in terms of what to do. So one order was to do parentheses for number one. The second order was to do exponents. The third order was to do multiplication and division. Sigma is telling you summation. So what that is saying is simply you need to add all x values. Then, after you do summation, any additional addition and subtraction will be done. And that, of course, would be done from left to right the same way that you read. Okay? So, very important that you understand the order of operations. If you've forgotten them, um, or if they've given you trouble, what I would say is before you do any kind of equation that you write them down so they're right there with you and so you can look at them to make sure that you're doing uh, your mathematical equation in the right order. So we're gonna, top, we're gonna now try a few problems. So the first problem we're gonna try is the sum of x that you see right here. And remember that funny kind of looking E is a sigma from the Greek alphabet. And that's just going to tell us that we need to summate. So we need to add together all our numbers. Now remember, we would go through our orders of operation. So the first thing we would think is we'd look at our uh, problem and see if there's any parentheses. No, there's not any parentheses. Then we'd say, are there any exponents? No, there are not any exponents. Then what we would say are, is there any uh, uh, multiplication and division? No. So the first thing we come upon is summation. So what that means is we're going to have to take all of our values. In this case, we have 4, 2, 1, and 5, which represent measurement on a value. And then we're going to go ahead and add those together. So we're going to add 4 plus 2 plus 1 plus 5, which equals 12. So what we know is that the sum of x is going to be equal to 12. All right. So the sum of x is equal to 12. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and go on to our next problem. And our next problem is a little more complicated, but not too much. 
In our next problem, what we see is that our first order of operation is going to be an exponent because we see that little a sub superscripted 2. So we know that there's an exponent and it's a square. So what we have is a sum of x squared. So since there's no parentheses, we do exponents first. So what that means is you're going to go over to your x variables, which are 4, 2, 1, and 5, and you're going to square each of them. So you're going to have 4 plus times 4 is 16. Pretty easy because it's a square. And then we have 2 times 2, which equals 4. And then we have 1 times 1, which equals 1. And then we have 5 times 5, which equals 25. And then we would simply add those together and because that's our next step. Our next step is telling us to summate. So we have 16 plus 4 plus 1 plus 25, and that equals 46. All right, so 16 plus 4 plus 1 plus 25. So our answer to this problem is 46. So you see how important the order of operations are. If you do not follow them properly, you will not get the right answer. All right, now, for the next problem, what we have is we have the sum of x, but notice it's in parentheses. And remember that parentheses is our first order of operation. So what this is saying, that the first thing we have to do is what's in the parentheses. Then the second thing we'll do is our exponent, which is our superscript 2. So we're going to first do the work in the parentheses, which is the summation of x, and then we're going to square it. So we would take our values, 4 plus 2 plus 1 plus 5 would equal 12. And then we're going to go ahead and take that 12, and we're going to square it, and we're going to get 144. So our final answer here would be 144. And remember that the order that we did this in was that we did the parentheses first, and then after we did the parentheses, we went ahead and we did the second order, uh, which was the exponents. In this case, it was the square. Now, our final problem is that we're going to have to take uh, what's in our parentheses first, because that's the order of operations, and we do have parentheses. And it does instruct us to take each value and subtract 1. So that's the first thing that we're going to do. Then the second thing we're going to do is we're going to summate. So that's going to be the second. So the first thing that we did is we took 4 minus 1, which equals 3, because that was in our parentheses, then 2 minus 1, which equals 1, then 1 minus 1, which equals 0, then 5 minus 1, which equals 4. And then we added those together. 3 plus 1 plus 4 equals 8. So our answer here is 8. So go ahead and practice these. And once again, remember that the order of operations is going to be very important going forward in terms of being able to get the right answer for your equation. So make sure you write these down um, and make sure that you have them handy when you're going through and solving the problem. All right. Thanks, and I'll see you soon. Bye.